by indication, the importance of it is, can be dependent on the situation. Obviously, if you're fishing in the margins on a really clear and open water, it's um, not really that important. You know, the fish is going to pick up the rig, shoot off into the lake, and you're going to get a screaming take. But on the flip side of that, if you're fishing um, up to snags on an island, and uh, you're fishing in the slack line in the same way as if you're fishing in the margins, the fish could be into the snags before you get a single bleep, so you obviously wouldn't do that. Um, in that situation, to fish with the rod pointing straight at the area where you're fishing, and uh, fish with a fairly tight line, I like to fish with a tiny, like sort of one inch drop on the bobbin, just so that when it first picks up, you've got that first little inch lift that will give you the bleeps and um, let you know that something's going on at the other end. When you're fishing to an island, say for example, um, I sort of always anticipate the fish swimming around the island margin, and uh, in that situation, you can get away with a tighter line. And also, I feel that, especially if it's any sort of range, the uh, the line's had time, even on a semi-tight line, to droop down. It's probably coming up from the from the shelf a little bit. I wouldn't say it's off the bottom all the way across. This morning when I got here, I was fishing in the edge, you know, we'd seen some, some fish topping and stuff, and then in that situation, I was using a slack line. And that's purely because if I get a bite at short range, the fish is only going to move away from me and uh, I'll know more than soon enough that I've got to take. When fishing like a really, really long range, I generally fish what I would call like a semi-slack line. Say for example at Gigantica, you know, quite often I find myself fishing between 100, 120, 130 yards with a generally fairly clear bottom, a little bit of weed out there and you've got 20 foot of water. So I sink the line down get it down as deep as I can. I pay a little bit out, but not a lot, because when you get a bit of undertow, it turns, and I don't think there's any point in paying out any more line in that situation. I'll use a slack line over a tight line in open water situations where there's no snags between me and the fish, no weed, and uh, anywhere I've got perfect line lay, because in that situation, I'm not too worried about getting instant indication. What I'm really trying to achieve is keeping the line as close to the bottom as possible out of the way of the fish, so that they can move freely throughout my swim, gaining confidence and hopefully leading to some action. People often wonder why, um, what is the big deal with the stow indicators um, and what they do different, differently to a conventional um, indicator. And the real uh, difference between a stow and a normal indicator is that the line is trapped to it, so it shows up forward and backward movement really, really efficiently, letting you know about those really finicky bites that you can get when you're fishing with zig rigs and uh, fishing at long range as well. As far as bite indication goes, I can't really think of a reason why I would need to use any other bobbin. They do every form of indication in the way that I want them to, and I can't think of anything else that would do it better. Uh, with regards to the day and how the session panned out, um, it was quite important to fish with the bobbins at the top, you know, fishing to that far bank. They can only come towards me, and I need to know about that as quickly as possible because uh, you don't know, even though this lake's pretty clear, there could be the odd stick or branch out in the bottom between me and where I'm fishing. And uh, if I'd had a slack line with the bobbins down and the fish had come towards me, I could easily done a roundabout, round a, round a little stick or something, and that could have led to a lost fish. In my opinion, angling pressure is the biggest problem in all of the fishing that I face on all of the waters that I fish. You know, if it wasn't for anglers and lines going through the swims and angling stones, they would be much easier to catch. You know, I don't believe that a carp that hasn't seen a boilie doesn't know what it is. You know, it knows its food, it can smell it, it can see it, it takes it. So, if angling pressure is the biggest thing, you know, that causes more trouble and makes the carp more difficult to catch, then what you have to do when you're fishing, you try and have to make it less apparent that you're there. And the ways that you can do that is obviously by casting less, making less disturbance in your swim. But inevitably, at the end of all that, you've got your lines in the water. So if you can fish slack and you can keep your lines out of the way of the fish, you know, it can only be beneficial.